and say good morning to our co-host, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Good morning, Rob. Good to see you this morning. Fresh off lunch yesterday with Dandy Staggers and Tom Lang and a great birthday cake made by Julie Landis up in Hampshire County. What? That Goodness was gracious. That's amazing cake. That's delicious. Cake. It, it's the kind yeah. of cake that just keeps on giving, buddy. Yeah. You can bite of that yeah. cake, and the flavors just keep opening up yeah. every bite you take. Also by Maria Lawrenson here. Good morning, Maria. Good morning. How are you all? Great. How are you? It's a beautiful day again. Going to be Actually a warm one. going to be a warm one. Going to be a warm one. We went from winter to summer. In one day. In one day. Sometimes. <laughs> Let's say good morning to Delegate John Hardy is the Vice Chair of Finance. And uh, John, of course, as I mentioned, a uh, man that was responsible for getting the work done to help get those free rate on test kits out there. John, good morning. Hey, good morning, Rob. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my honor and pleasure to be able to cover those uh, uh, radon kits for everybody today and today only. So. <laughs> today and today only. <laughs> but the reason why we can keep giving those away for free is because of the work that you did on that to get those grants started again. So thank you kindly, yeah, sir. The- yeah, that, that grant program kind of got a little interesting. There was, uh, it had became, you know, that grant was something that we always applied for and we were able to get because uh, Berkeley County and Jefferson County and the Eastern Panhandle was, is uh, <clears throat> fraught with uh, high levels of radon. And uh, somewhere down the road, someone decided to make the decision to make that a competitive grant. And there were actually counties in West Virginia who were receiving grants for radon kits that doesn't even have radon. So we, we, we did some work behind the scenes and was able to get that uh, squared away and, and uh, try to get that grant program uh, uh, really moved back the way that it was and made it a little bit more applicable for uh, Berkeley County to, uh, to be able to get that money. John, are these federal dollars originally or are they state-generated uh, dollars? I worked on the state side of it, Bill. I'm not exactly sure if there's any federal drawdown money. I'm sure there's probably federal drawdown money somewhere along the line. But I worked with uh, – there's actually an office of radon uh, mitigation in the state of West Virginia, and that's the huh. office that I worked with. And it's part of a, a larger uh, group of, that works in the state that uh, um, relegates grants and such to uh, different – uh, health departments and other departments throughout the state. So uh, we was able to work with them and was able to get that squared away. We have we have the radon because of a lot of the carbonate rock, limestone rock here. What about the other part of the state? Are they do they have the comparable radon radon problem that we have? No, they have coal and natural gas. Put that in little, ge- geology their, terms. Their minerals, are, their minerals are worth a little more than ours. Yeah. John, yesterday yeah. you and uh, various other folks, including many elected Republicans from our local area, were in attendance in Charlestown as Attorney General Patrick Morrissey announced that he will run for governor. The uh, The mystery has finally uh, been resolved here, and not, it's not Senate. It is governor he has selected. Uh, give me an idea uh, what the reaction was amongst those who had gathered. So um, I'll report to you that it was a very well-attended um uh, announcement. It was done at the Clarion in, in Harper's Ferry. Um, they had a very nice setup. I would say that there was probably at least 150 people there, uh, elected officials from all over the Eastern Panhandle, uh, saw county commissioners and uh, delegates and senators and uh, a lot, lot of elected officials um, and very energized. It was a very uh, you know energized announcement. Uh, I thought that uh, Attorney General Morsi had a very uh, direct and to the point um, announcement. I thought that he hit all the points that he needed to, to hit, uh, what he wants to accomplish in his um, you know, bid for governor and what he will do uh, if he is successfully elected to governor. Uh, we know that that field is becoming a little crowded. Uh, there's a lot of good people that are, that are in that race. Um, you know, Mac Warner, who is the Secretary of State right now. Uh, you also have Moore Capito, who is the chairman of uh, House Judiciary, uh, there's a gentleman from Huntington uh, who is a uh, Chris Miller, who's a prominent car salesman um, and owns a lot of car dealerships. Uh, and I'm sure there's some other uh, people that are not as well known um, that are getting in the race also. But uh, it was exciting, and it was uh, it was there was definitely some energy in the room. And yep. also JB Mikulski. Oh yes, also yeah. JB Mikulski, who is our is our auditor. Yeah. Uh, John, is it is it common for uh, for elected officials to attend an announcement such as this? There's kind of an implied uh, association that if you attend the announcement, you're going to be supportive of that individual. Uh, was that implied? 
Well, I think that if any time that you have someone from the Eastern Panhandle who is going to run for the governor, um, you know, and you're an Eastern Panhandle elected official, uh, to my knowledge, I don't think we've ever had a governor from the Eastern Panhandle. Um, you know, A.G. Morrissey really touched on his record and what he's done in the last six, year, six years, uh, you know, his conservative record, um, what he has done against the uh, Obama administration and the Biden administration uh, fighting for, you know, our energy independence, overreaching um, air quality from the EPA. Uh, he's worked to, you know, build reciprocity with other states uh, for our gun rights. He has protected the, our Second Amendment rights uh, with some overreaching. Uh, so, you know, he really highlighted some of the things that he has done in a proven record as a proven conservative uh, and not really being afraid to take on uh, the far left. So I, I think he did a really good job of of selling that and, and and telling, you know, his positions and the things that he has done since he's been the AG. And I think, obviously, as a uh, group of legislators from the Eastern Panhandle, um, it would be nice to see a governor for once come from the Eastern Panhandle. That, that would be my views. Not saying that there's anything against any of the other gentlemen that are in the race, um, but – you know, if you have a proven conservative from, you know, that's from your area and you, most of us in the Eastern Panhandle agree with his actions and the things that he has accomplished, um, why well, certainly we're going to come out to his announcement. So, John, uh, he used uh, the words um, conservative several times during his announcement, and we're going to have him on here in a in a little while. So I'll ask him the question as well. So is this a distinguishing characteristic? Is that what he was trying to do, would you say, to distinguish himself from Mr. Warner, Capito, uh, Miller, and McCuskey, um, that he's more conservative? What do you think? I think he was just clearly trying to state his record. I think he was just clearly trying to state, you know, that he has a record, that he things that he has worked on, since he's been the attorney general of West Virginia, you know, he has uh, gotten one of the largest opioid uh, settlements ever for the state of West Virginia. He's, he's, you know, he's fought against the opioid crisis and went out and sued um, the, the manufacturers of those uh, uh, prescription medications that have devastated the state of West Virginia. He's been on the forefront of the uh, fight for the abortion, abortion rights and then rights of the unborn. And I think he was just clearly stating his point and just clearly stating what he has done and what his record was. And, and he has a very lengthy record. He's been involved in a lot of different litigation uh, uh, representing the state of West Virginia. And he was just clearly stating that, you know, he has a conservative record and he was pointing that out. Delegate John Hardy, our guest here on the program, he is the vice chair of finance. He was in attendance yesterday along with many other elected officials, uh, elected officials from our local area for the announcement that uh, Attorney General Patrick Morrissey intends to run for governor. As Maria pointed out, we will have Attorney General Morrissey on the program at 835 uh, this morning or, or thereabouts. John, in regards to how the delegation of the Eastern Panhandle will, will address this, I'm, I'm sure it's up to each individual, but for the most part, uh, will people be endorsing certain candidates, or do you anticipate that most of you folks will just sit this primary out and wait until the general? You know, I, I don't know. I can't speak for other members of our delegation. I have come out already and, and publicly given my support uh, for candidate Riley Moore. I am um, publicly endorsing Riley Moore for his, uh, the, his seat for Congress. Uh, and we'll do anything that I can do to help Riley in the Eastern Bay handle, uh, whether it be organizational stuff or wh whatever Riley really needs. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, politicians like to stay out of uh, primary races because you can you, know, you could really kind of get yourself in some trouble. And and uh, I've you know I've, I've had some support in some of my primaries and some I've not. And so it's a it's a slippery slope sometimes, and um, some some people feel more comfortable doing it than others. Um, but, you know, at least to the point of where if you have someone that's in your area that's going to be announcing that they're going to be running for a, a major, you know, a, a major seat um, statewide office like that, uh, uh, an office that is as prestigious as the governor, uh, local officials are going to come out and want to, want, to, want, to, want to hear what that official has to say and what his approach is going to be or her approach is going to be and, and uh, at least support them in their announcement. So so this kind of uh, harkens back to my question earlier. Uh, so the attendance was not necessarily an endorsement. I, I don't 
don't know. I don't know. I, I couldn't say that everyone was there. Everyone that yeah. was there that attended was endorsing yeah. uh, um, A.G. Morsey, mm -hmm. but the attendance was uh, it was very well attended. There was a lot of energy in the room, um, and he had a great speech and uh, really hit all the points that I think he needed to hit to understand uh, his record, where he comes, what he, what he where he comes from, and what his uh, thoughts process are. Uh, what he wants to do with West Virginia, how he wants to move West Virginia. And I think he's got a lot more to come. He's working on some plans, uh, his plans for education and some other uh, areas of um, West Virginia that he wants to, you know, really be involved with. So um, just to just to close the loop here, um, so I'm taking it, John, then that your attendance did indicate your endorsement. Yes? Um. I would say that I am a very uh, big proponent of Patrick Morrissey. Okay. Uh, I, I, I am very uh, excited to see him get in the governor's race. I'm excited for his record, what he has done in the past. Um, it would be really nice. <clears throat> As someone who goes to Charleston and continually fights for the Eastern Panhandle, that's, that's, you know, that's kind of my MO. That's what I do. I'm co constantly trying to bring light to the different challenges that the Eastern Panhandle has that is different from the rest of the state. Uh, it's nice to see someone who has a presence in the Eastern Panhandle uh, maybe be someone that could represent the entire state. And I, I think you're right. I think that, you know, just the whole concept of someone from here, um, I can remember years and years ago in my former life, you know, talking about the electability of someone in statewide office um, from the Eastern Panhandle, and certainly Attorney General Morrissey has, has proven that, as have, um, you know, that's that sort of changed a little bit uh, these days than, it, um, than in previous years. And if you think about it, we actually, we have an opportunity here to have uh, maybe uh, someone uh, from the Eastern Panel, or at least that's Pies from the Eastern Panel, to represent us in Congress. We have uh, our uh, sitting congressman now, who is lives in the Eastern Panhandle, could represent us in the Senate. We could have someone that has ties to the Eastern Panhandle represent us in the governor's office. Uh, as of now, we have the Senate president is from the Eastern Panhandle. So, um, you know, our majority leader in the House uh, is from the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, I'm the vice chair of finance. So we are definitely garnering positions in, in Charleston. Um, and we are trying to uh, urgently uh, make the rest of the state understand the challenges that we uh, face in the Eastern Panhandle are different than any other parts of the state, that we're not in competition uh, with any other parts of the state. Uh, we are in competition with, you know, uh, Maryland and Virginia and some of the richest counties uh, in the country. Uh, we, we actually had a meeting last night with a, a, water, uh, a water company talking about our water development and our uh, infrastructure and the pace that we are setting for uh, water needs and sewer needs. Um, if you saw the rate of growth that we have had in the last 15 years and the proposed rate of growth that we are having, you know, we are going to have some situations that we are going to have to overcome uh, if we're going to continue uh, a certain uh, quality of life uh, in the Eastern Panhandle. John, I want to thank you so much for your time this morning. I appreciate you uh, making the appearance. Yep. Thank you all very much, and uh, I'll be listening to the rest of the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thanks. sir.